There were many famous swordsmen at the turn of the 16th century. All of them had founded their own schools of swordsmanship. There was the great Onojiroe Montadaki, a warrior from the Boso Peninsula, who had studied the art of fencing under the legendary Ito Itosai Kagehisa, founder of the Ito School of Swordsmanship. Tadaaki had gone on to become a private fencing instructor to the shogun Tokugawa Ieyasu. So had Yagyu Munenori, whose father Muniyoshi had studied the art of fencing under the great Kami Izumi Nobutsuna. He had developed Nobutsuna's style into the Yagyu Shinkagaryu, which had just become the official fencing school of the Tokugawa shogunate in Edo. The shogunate, however, had only just been established and while they drew much prestige from their association with the shogunate, all of these schools of swordsmanship were relatively new. The Yong Musashi knew of these men and their schools, yet none loomed larger in the young swordsman's mind than that of the famous Yoshioka clan. Their Heiho Sho in Kyoto drew swordsmen from all over the realm. Musashi realized that to fully defeat even one member of their clan would be a first stepping stone toward true recognition. If his father's relative victory had earned him the title of Heiho Sha without equal in Japan, how much more would an outright victory contribute to his own standing? Thus, early one morning, well before the sun had risen over Morie Bay, Musashi silently rose from his futon in his father's mansion collected his few belongings and made his way to the port's roadstead. Having made arrangements with a skipper, he embarked in a small merchant vessel destined for the port of Sakai, at the far end of the inland sea. From there he would make his way to the old capital Kyoto, to throw down the gauntlet to the Yoshioka clan. Eager to avenge Naokata, the Yoshioka took up Musashi's challenge. Their ace swordsman Seijiro would meet Musashi in a duel on the grounds of the Rendai Temple, on the northern outskirts of Kyoto. Musashi went to the appointed place in a palanquin, but when he arrived, he leapt out and floored Seijiro in one blow with his bokuto. The treacherous defeat of their ace swordsman by an upstart from the south sent a shockwave through the Yoshioka clan. Most outraged was Seijiro's brother Denshichiro, who challenged Musashi to a duel on the very spot where his brother had been defeated. But when the next day he charged at Musashi with his five-foot bokuto, the latter wrested the weapon from him and slew him with it there and then. They now decided to ambush him at Sagarimatsu, a small grove near Musashi's hostel. There were several hundreds of them, armed with sticks, bows and arrows, led by Denshichiro's son Matashichiro. But Musashi saw through the ambush. He killed Matashichiro and dispersed his followers, and having displayed his supremacy in the art of swordsmanship, he returned to Kyoto. The demise of the Yoshioka clan was sealed by Musashi's stunning victory. The young swordsman had set out to defeat merely one of its members. Instead, he had brought down a school of swordsmanship that had ruled supreme in Kyoto for close to a century. In doing so, he had surpassed his father, for where the latter had merely won two bouts of one duel, Musashi had gained three victories killing two of his opponents. Far from content, Musashi still wanted to widen his skills. And thus he travelled to the temple town of Nara, home ground of the Hozo Inryu, the art of fighting with the lance. Its founder was Hozo In Kakuzenbo Ene, direct descendant of the Nakano Mikado, a line of warrior monks associated with Nara's Kofuku temple. Inei was intrigued with Musashi's way of using both swords, 
which in spite of his vast experience he'd never seen before. He was too old to engage in combat with Musashi himself, but eager to pit him against one of his senior pupils, the talented Okuzoi. They fought two bouts, but then neither was the monk able to gain the upper hand. From Nara, Musashi travelled to Edo. Edo during the early 17th century was a wash with swordsmen. It had been on the battlefield that they and their ancestors had developed their own unique fencing techniques, adding new branches to existing schools. As a result, the number of dojo in Edo was almost limitless. Word of Musashi's unique style soon spread. One of the many students to flock to his dojo was Mizuno Katsunari. Like Musashi still only in his twenties, he was already a warrior of great standing. He was Ieyasu's direct cousin and had fought in the great battles at Komaki and Nagakute. The only time Ieyasu and Toyotomi Hideyoshi had confronted each other on the field of battle. Before long, word of Musashi's art reached the shogun. Through Katsunari, Musashi was invited to teach at Edo Castle. But Musashi declined. He bridled at the thought of being placed below a member of the Yagyu clan. But when the shogun commissioned him to paint a folding screen, Musashi painted for Ieyasu a scene of a rising moon of the Musashino, the vast plains that inspired his name. Having spent more than seven years in Edo, Musashi decided to return home. His father was now an old man, eager to pass on his dojo in Kitsuki to his son. It was on his way there, in the spring of 1612, that Musashi fought the duel that would make him immortal, when on the small island of Funashima, in the Straits of Shimonoseki, he defeated the great Sasaki Kojiro, demon of the western provinces, with no more than the oar of a boat. Hey!